All right, there's a couple questions that have popped up many times and has already popped up uh, this week, even though we're not even on Chapter 12 yet, and I anticipate uh, we'll be coming up uh, again. I don't know. I don't remember if this is covered. I thought this was covered in the videos, but maybe not. But I'm just going to go over these two types of problems regardless, okay? So anyway, let's go. This is Chapter 12, uh, Linear Regression, okay? The equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Well, let's, let's relate that to not a line, so to speak, but let's equate that to what it means when you're trying to figure out some information. m is the slope, the rate of change, and b is the y-intercept, the initial amount. Let's go further. Consider that you're going into a bar. The cover charge is $5. So no matter how many drinks you buy, whether it's 0, 5, 10, 100, you're going to pay that $5 regardless, just to get in. So that's the y-intercept, the initial amount. The amount you're going to pay, that no matter what happens after that, you're going to pay that amount, okay? And drinks are $3 per drink. So now it depends on how many drinks you buy to see how much you're going to spend for the night, right? To set up an equation to see how much you'll spend for the entire evening, y, which would be, in this case, the number of dollars you spend for the night, equals 3x plus 5. 3, 3 is the variable. Like, I mean, it, I mean it's, it's 3 all the time, but it's multiplied by how many drinks you're going to get. So 3 times how many drinks you're going to get, that's x, okay? And plus 5. 5 is that initial amount that's, you know, no matter what happens here, that 5 is always added because that's what, you, what you're paying to get into the bar, okay? So say you go and you buy 4 drinks. So then the amount you're going to spend is 3 times x is 4, okay? x is 4 plus 5, and then order of operations 12 plus 5 is 17 you spend on the evening, okay? Just a quick, quick, dirty background. Now let's get to the problems at hand. Here's one right here. So now this is saying, from 1987 to 2009, the banks insured. Oh, by the way, that slope could be positive or negative. Okay, um, if something is decreasing, you know, then the slope's going to be negative. If something's increasing, of course, the slope's going to be positive. Okay, like. In our example, going into a bar, that slope is never going to be negative unless they're giving out drinks. So, I mean, anyway, so what it's saying is, if you read this, let me just read to you that this is B of T. It doesn't, you know, the, whatever, the, the, the actual variables don't really matter. B of T is the number of banks. T in, is the is a time in quarter of the year, and is, um, where T is the number of years in this case, okay? T is the number of years, all right? So in other words, here's what this is saying. I'll kind of verbally tell you what this equation means as far as what this is. From 87, we, they started this, this uh, study in 1987. In 87, the amount of banks that there were in 1987 was this amount, 13,742. So that's the y-intercept, okay? That's the y-intercept. I don't know why I can't have it. 13,742 is the y-intercept. Why? Because that's the initial amount of banks that there were in 1987. Every year since 1987, the number of banks on average, okay, this is, you know, it could be different every year, but on average, decreased by amount of 321 banks per year because that's what this negative 321 stands for, okay? So if we're doing uh, year zero, obviously year zero, T is zero, and there's your answer. 13,742, that's your y-intercept. That's how many banks there were to, to, when the study started in 1987. If I go to 1988, then T is one, then I take 13,742, subtract 321, and I get how many banks there were in 1988. In 1982, I would go, you know, uh, T is two, I would take 13,742, subtract, you know, double that three negative 321 and I might answer and so on okay all right so find the slope slope is negative 321 whichever whichever is in front of that variable t is the slope okay you know because that's what's we're engaging on how many years are we talking about that have passed by okay all right interpret the slope interpret the slope means that's negative and that's the number of banks that's the number of banks decreased by the number of banks decreased by, well, that doesn't make any sense. This, uh, it's just worded incorrectly here. Decreased by negative 321, that's just worded incorrectly. The correct answer is the number of banks decreased by 321 banks per year. 
Don't get confused by decrease by negative 321. That's kind of double negative there. The number of banks decreased by 321 banks per year. That's what the slope is. Y-intercept, of course, is the 13,742. Okay. All right. And the... Uh, <clears throat> Um, so to interpret that result is that's the number of banks there were. When did the study start? 1987. That was the uh, Y-intercept is the number of banks in 1997, or 1987, rather, okay? And I'm surprised they didn't ask you this. I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway because we're looking at this problem. Guarantee this question is on at least one of your problems that's similar to this, okay? I'm going to ask the question... Um, just going to ask, just so do it this way. How, how, uh, how many banks were there in, let's say, say 1992, okay? All right, you'll be asked a question similar to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it now and, and not even bother going on a different problem. Okay, so all you have to do, how many years from 1987 to 1992? It's five years. So all you do is plug in T for five, okay? So it would be negative 321 times five plus 13,742. And I forget my calculator. Not that I might do the math in my head, it's certainly not that good. Okay. Um, 321 times 5, negative, minus, plus, 1, 3, 7, 4, 2. Okay, that would be the answer. All right. I'm going to check that real quick and just make sure. Yes, that's correct. So in 1992, as five years have passed, just plug in T, T equals five, and you'll get 12,137 banks in 1992. Okay? All right. Okay, now let's go on to another one that seems to come up quite a bit. Okay, 19, all right, this is the same exact problem we just did, just different numbers. I just went over, I told you there'd be a question ask how many there were. So all you do in this one is plug in a different equation, different years, but it's the same exact thing. And you just plug in five for T and solve, okay? All right. And here's the another, here's the other one. Okay, all right, in this problem, okay, yeah, let's just read it for a second. The following table shows retail and sales in drugstores, okay? All right, it's really similar to what we just did, okay? It's just like one extra step, okay, that there, you have to do that they didn't do in the problem we just did. Don't even ignore all this, okay? Ignore all that, it means nothing, okay? If they didn't give you the equation, you would have to, look at this to come up with the equation, which you will in other problems later in the chapter, but I know that's on the video. I'm not going to go over it in this problem. Anyway, they gave you the equation. That's all you need. You do not need this. Okay. They gave you this. Nice to look at. Looks like, you know, looks nice and fun and, you know, looks, looks, looks like fun. But all you need is this. All you need is this equation. They gave it to you. No need for this chart. No need for this chart. This and this are irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. And the function is a good model for the data. I don't even know why they, it's stupid they even ask that, okay? All right, to the nearest billion. Now, everything's in billions, so don't even worry about, like, changing all this to billion. Just put in, in 2015. Well, how many years past 2015 is 1995? And that would be 10. So all you have to do is plug in 10 for X, okay? I'm going to flip over here so I can look at the answers, okay? That's always a good model for the data. Stupid question. I don't know why they ask so many dumb questions, okay? All right. <sighs> okay, so all you do is plug in uh, uh, 10 for X. So it would be... Nine, 
9.44 times 10, or 9.44 um, 9 times 10, and then plus 84.182. Okay, so it says, um, oh, what did I do wrong? 2015. Oh, 20 years. Duh. You can't see. Okay, see, I told you I'm bad. 20 years, not 10. 1995 to 2015 is 20 years. So I need to put in 20 for X, T, whatever. It doesn't matter. The actual letters don't even matter. Yeah, it is X in this case. Okay, that could be T, and it would be no difference. So, all right. My bad. Times 20. 18.88 plus. Uh, good thing I flipped over here to the answers. I would have led you guys astray and not even realized it. Plus 84.182. I'm going to pause. Why my, my, my brain must not be working? Well. Okay, the first time I made a mistake because I didn't put in 20. The second time, I don't know what I did wrong. I just put it in wrong in the calculator. But after I did it correctly, I did get 2.273 to the nearest, uh, the nearest dollar. Basically, the nearest whole number. Okay. 272 and change, all right? Rounds to 273, okay? All right, now, here's the one that's a little bit tricky, okay? Find the year in which sales will be 243, okay? So basically, again, just put in 243 for Y. So 243 This is, so, uh, all right, so the, this is relatively simple, but it is a little bit of a process, okay? So in this one, I'm just going to put in, uh, screw up, all time. So 243 equals 9.44x plus 182, or 184, 182. Subtract 184.182 uh, 182 from both sides. We're trying to solve for x, okay? We're trying to solve for x, okay? So when you do 243 minus 184 point, okay? 243 minus 84.182 is 158.818, 158.818, okay? Equals 9.44x. Now just divide each side by 9.44. Okay, so that will give you x. So 158.18 divided by 9.44, divided by 9.44. So x is 16.8. So all you do from there, so in other words, 16.8 years later, 16.8 years later is when our sales will be 243 billion. Okay, now they're asking in what year, so 16.8. So now you take 16, not 17, 16, and add it to 1995. If you take 16 and add it to 1995, you get 2011, okay? Because the answer, the answer to our math is it took 16.8 years for us to get to 243 billion, okay? If I take 16 and add it to 1995, you get 2011. Now. I know some of you will probably ask, why isn't that 2012? Because 16.8 is closer to 17 than it is to 16. Doesn't matter. Eight tenths of the year in, you're still in 2011, right? Even 364 days in, you're still in 2011. So no matter what that digit is after the 16, you still just add the 16 no matter what. Why? Because, you know, 16.99999 years later, you haven't gotten to 2012 yet. You're still in 2011. So just add that 16. Forget about the decimal after. Take that 16. Add it to 1995. And there's your answer. Okay. And that's it. I, you know, the rest of them, I know I covered in those videos. I may have even covered these, but I uh, something tells me maybe I did, maybe I didn't. So extra, extra video for you.